the low line gardens run from Great Shiplock Park about five city blocks long. It's a linear park, a linear garden um, that sits between the Virginia Capitol Trail, the CSX Viaduct right here, and the canal. And it basically is a series of perennial beds that are framed in native shrubs that kind of have the rhythm of the CSX Viaduct. And it, we then have an alley of several species of native trees. We at Capital Trees believe that quality urban landscapes have the power to enrich a community and transform a community. A city that has got a network of quality parks and streetscapes and trails and greenways that reach all neighborhoods in the community, you find that that's a thriving city. So I think it's really critical and I think one of the things that we've learned during this pandemic is that parks are essential. We have to have these spaces to sort of be human I and mean, to be able to access, get out there. So urban spaces need them as much as rural spaces. We all need the parks. Um, it gives us the ability to go out and recreate. It gives us the ability to have quality of life. Um, I think every element of, of our community has to think about how we entice that green space. And this one particularly is a great example of multiple things that you can do in one green space. Right now we're sitting here and enjoying the aspect of this beautiful day. You also have the water right next to us to sort of understand that natural element. And then there's a bike trail right behind us that you can also take advantage of. And it's a multimodal uh, transportation that you can get from here all the way to Williamsburg, Virginia. That's pretty spectacular of a space that we have just sitting here. So if we can have more of these in our communities, think about how great places it would be to live. The space that we're actually sitting in you know, looked nothing like it, it does currently today. Um, it was this big brownfield essentially underneath of a railroad trestle that we're, we're sitting under. Um, and uh, you know, when you, now today when you look around at this space, um, and you see the amount of people that are just traversing through the space, that are sitting contemplating on benches, that are you know, of, of various backgrounds. This space wasn't just built for you know, one, one group of people or one subsect of you know, recreationalists or one community. Uh, this is a space where you know, all of Richmond comes together um, to enjoy being outside, to, to recreate, to, to get out of their you know, confined spaces during this COVID time. Um, and, and so, you know, really, um, you, you ask, you know, how is this, you know, a, a public space? I mean, um, how is it not? Um, and, and, you know, quite honestly, this is, you know, a great example of, uh, of how public spaces um, not only should be developed, um, but really, you know, should be cared for, you know, in, in the long term. We, of course, have the goal of having quality public landscapes to, um, be beautiful and, and draw in the community to enjoy them, to increase biodiversity, to reduce the heat island effect, to increase air and water quality. But none of that is sustainable if we don't have healthy plants and soil and water. And if we don't have the resources to take care of these public landscapes long term. Um, we found that most landscape companies tend to use practices that are efficient, but in the long term don't create healthy plants and environments. And so Anna Aquino, who is our projects chair, member of the board, and also a member of Boxwood Garden Club, she um, put together an amazing treatise on how to sustainably manage a public landscape. We are using that as a blueprint for how we can manage the low line. <laughs> the more that we can build these spaces so that we think about stormwater runoff, we think about how we do plantings, how we do all these different aspects, this is how we take care of the, the planet for the next generation to come. So it is essential. Uh, for us to be thinking along those lines and the more that we can build these spaces uh, and think about how we develop our communities. One of the exciting things about being here in Richmond is that we are growing 
And so let's grow with green space as part of that. You know, this is a wild city. You know, like for those of you that haven't been here, you've got a river running through it. We have climbing walls really close to downtown. There's so many great outdoor stuff you can do. Richmond really sets the model of how to do an urban green space and do it really well. But we continue to build on that model. In using Anna's recommendations, we see the low line as a laboratory and we're executing starting this past spring we're executing many of the recommendations looking at our successes and our failures and hoping that it's a model for public landscapes going forward that want to do sustainable management. The low lines really uh, and capital trees have really been leading the way, um, not just in again elevating you know public green spaces and you know public landscapes, um, but also really being innovative in in how uh, the organization is is looking at taking care of the land, um, right? Because we're stewards of the land ultimately. Um, we're here to pass this land on to the next generation and ensure that it's better than we left it. Um, and that's exactly what Capital Trees is doing, not only by elevating and, and you know, enhancing landscaping in these spaces, um, but also you know, coming up with innovative ways to you know, manage um, the landscape. Um, meaning, you know, looking at ways that, you know, are we mulching or are we using more organic methods? Are we spraying all the time or are we hand pulling? Um, but it goes much deeper than that, quite honestly. Um, it's how do we engage the public in these spaces and understanding, you know, the management um, that goes into these type of spaces and these public spaces and how do they engage in these public spaces to ensure that their public space in their community is also cared for in the same manner. Um, and so, you know, Working with organizations like Groundwork RVA, um, a local nonprofit that are focused on training um, young you know, urban members of black and brown communities, disenfranchised communities here in Richmond, on you know, how again to, uh, to be you know, and advocate you know, for these type of spaces, how to manage and care for these spaces, marrying you know, this public landscape with, like, this, with training, with understanding, with you know, this, all the things that you know, a public landscape can kind of bring to the table. I mean, you know, wow, again, there's no you know, better example of, you know, of, of a space that can do that than you know, the low line. These type of spaces you can tell people gravitate towards automatically. They need to be able to get out, walk, move, enjoy nature. And so this is a great project of which you think about also, not only was this something that is a city and CSX owned, but we had a private partner come in and develop it through donations. So the community came in and built this space. Um, millions of dollars were raised to make this happen. And so I think that shows the partnership of, you know, multiple agencies coming together to do the right thing for a community and completely reimagining the space so that it is an asset to a community where before I think many people would not have said that it was really an asset in the neighborhood. I just think, that, you know, there's there's real opportunity in Richmond, um, you know, and in Virginia, but you know, specifically here in Richmond, to really you know, be a model um, for how, um, especially urban environments, uh, should care for um, their public spaces, um, and really not just care for those spaces. Um, how these spaces need to be planned um, and really be thought out as you know essential spaces uh, within communities. Um, not this afterthought, not this like secondary piece that you know, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we have enough money? These are central you know, themes that should be carried throughout you know, our, our new developments, you know, and even our retrofit you know, for our old developments. How do we elevate public space? Um, and how do we ensure public space is afforded, um, especially in communities in our city that do not have them currently?